Hey y'all and welcome to Yellow Texas, your go-to guide for all the things that put the great in the great state of Texas. I'm your host AC and we have a super show coming up for you today. First, we're headed to a one-of-a-kind experience that combines the great outdoors, a ghost town, and a good old-fashioned chili cook-off all in one down in Terralingua and Big Bend National Park. And to get the inside scoop, we sent our resident expert, founder of TexasHumor.com and chili cook-off judge, J.B. Saceda. Let's take a look. This is Terlingua, Texas, a mining town turned ghost town like so many others forgotten by history across the American frontier, except for one tiny difference. And that's because this sleepy ghost town is actually alive and well, thanks in part to its proximity to Big Bend State and National Parks. And on this particular weekend, it's home to the granddaddy of all chili cook-offs. So let's take a ride. After hearing a bit about the history of the event, I decided to get a taste for the history of the town with a quick tour of the ghost town and general store. So now we're over here at the Trilingua Ghost Town Cemetery, which has the final resting place of many former Trilingua residents. Given that we're so close to the Mexican border, there's a ton of Mexican influence here in this region. The chili cook-off happens on the first weekend in November, and coincidentally, that's the same time frame as the Dia de los Muertos, which was celebrated here last night at the Terlingua Ghost Town Cemetery, which you can see behind me. If you do find yourself in Terlingua, this is one of my favorite places to stop, a general store where you can stop and grab a cold one. Might go ahead and uh, trade in my hat today, putting some time down in the mine. I wonder if I need to get this thing registered and pick one up. This is my kind of flask. All flasks are my kind of flask, but this one is especially my kind of flask. So the building that we're standing in used to be the company store for one of the mines here in Terlingua. And this map up here is a depiction of what it looked like back in the day, uh, early 1900s when they were still mining what was known as Quicksilver back then uh, and now we know as Mercury. It's pretty neat. There are a lot of really great things to buy here, but my favorite's in the cooler back in the corner. I'm not a miner but uh, this is some Terlingua gold that I do like digging up. For one weekend, thousands of people descend upon this tiny ghost town to vie for the title of champion chili cook. But chili is only part of the attraction. They've got competitions for brisket, chickens, ribs, to name a few. And I would know, because I'm not just here as a TV host, I'll be judging on the finals table tomorrow, because clearly I have impeccable taste, or at least my mom tells me. So anyway, let's dig in. But that doesn't mean my trip was going to be all work and no play. In addition to the competition, there's music, dancing, and did I mention margaritas? And just a few miles down the road off in the distance, one of the most spectacular national parks in the United States, Big Bend. And we're gonna do it all this trip because you only live once, right Texas? <laughs> to get a greater appreciation for the art of chili, I spoke with a couple of former first place chili cooks to learn a little bit more about what it takes to make an award winning chili. We're looking for people that know how to cook chili. Do y'all know anyone? No. No? All right. So I just started cooking chili last year, 
and this is my first year to qualify. How long have you been coming out to Terlingua? 17 years. 17 years? Yeah. Maybe about my fifth year out here. Yeah, yeah I that's guess that's 2004. That's right. Hello, Good to see you, Kathleen. Good to see you. So I'm here with my friend Kathleen Talbot Ryan. She's a daughter of, of one of the founders of the cook-off. How long have you been coming out here? Okay, well I've been coming here since 1970. A long time. My dad, Frank X. Talbert, the Texas historian, and wrote the book about a bowl of red. Oh yeah. The history of chili con carne. Yeah. Well, his favorite place in Texas was the Big Ben. Yeah. So he and his PR guy, Tom Tierney, decided that they wanted to have a chili cook-off in his favorite place. And the other guys like Carol Shelby and David Whitsitt owned the land and the ghost town of Terlingua. That's, yeah. They chose this place in 1967. It's a hell of a place to come drive out and cook chili. And now what year are we in here at the cook-off? This cook -off? is 51. 51. It's a, like a family reunion, like I said, in Texas Monthly. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a, it's a big family reunion of people you're not blood related to but yes. you care about just as much. So anyway, well, thanks so much for telling that story. I, I'm you. so happy to be involved with this. Thank you, Jay. Yeah, of course. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, we'll see you later. So with day one behind us and a good meal in our belly, it's time for some dancing, some drinking, and looking forward to tomorrow when the real competition starts. We'll check in with you then. Cheers. It was down to work in my official role as judge of the Terlingua Chili Cook-Off. And what I quickly discovered was that the hardest part of this job was going to be picking a winner. So I judged 25 chilies, I'm pretty full. Not sure who the winner is, but I feel like a winner because I got to eat a lot of chili, drink a lot of tequila, and now I'm gonna stumble my way back to camp. So we'll see y'all later.